All right, for this demo, we're going to go through some of the PowerPoint slides that we've seen in class with the different performance charts. We'll start here with this tabular cruise performance chart and uh, the two example questions that we went through in class. And we'll just go back and review them here so that you can review them on your own uh, if you have any questions. For the first question, what is the expected fuel consumption for a 1,000 nautical mile flight at 8,000 feet at 22 degrees C? Uh, we'll go over there to the left side of the chart. You can see that at uh, 8,000 feet, we'll draw the arrow over to the right and uh, to the temperature of 22 degrees C. And then over to the right, a little further to the right, we see our corresponding fuel flow and true airspeed. And so we'll just go ahead and write that down here. So from 1,000 nautical miles divided by our true airspeed of 165 knots, that yields 6.098 hours, so approximately 6.1 hours um, in flight at 165 knots true airspeed and 1,000 nautical miles. This is obviously assuming um, a zero wind condition. We're not talking about ground speed here. This is zero wind, just true airspeed. So knots equals nautical miles per hour, and uh, we talked about that in class. So the next step in this is to take that 6.098 hours and multiply it by our fuel flow of 11.6 gallons, or sorry, 11.5 gallons per hour, and we end up with 70.1 gallons for our uh, total fuel consumption for this trip. So the next question, what is the manifold pressure setting at 6,500 feet at a temperature of ISA plus 36? Um, degrees Fahrenheit. So we look up there at the top of the chart and we see it circled up there at 36 degrees Fahrenheit so we know we're going to use that part of the chart. Then we have to um, interpolate between the 8,000 and the 6,000 foot pressure altitude levels for 6,500 feet. So 8,000 minus 6,000 is 2,000 feet. So that's our first difference. Now we need to find the difference between the two manifold pressures. 20.8 corresponding to the 8,000 foot manifold pressure, subtract 21 corresponding to the 6,000 foot manifold pressure, we end up with a negative 0.2. And then 8,000 minus 6,500 equals 1,500. That's our difference between the uh, 8,000 foot level and our desired pressure altitude of 6,500 feet. So it's 1,500 feet. And now we can set up our proportion. We put 1,500 over 2,000, and then we make that equivalent to x over negative 0.2. The negative 0.2 corresponds to the difference between 8,000 and 6,000, which is 2,000. So those two match up. And then the uh, 1,500 corresponding to the difference that we'd like to find. So we do the math. We do uh, negative 0.2 times 1,500, cross multiplying, and then divide by 2,000. And then we find that x equals negative. 0.15. Now we take that negative 0.15 and subtract it from our 20.8. So we're matching it up with uh, the 8,000 foot uh, pressure altitude, the 20.8 uh, manifold pressure there. Subtract our correction of negative 0.15 and that yields our 21 inches of manifold pressure for cruise at 6,500 feet at an ISA of plus 36. Here we have our cruise performance chart. Um, we're going to go ahead and find for what the fuel flow should be, what fuel flow a pilot should expect at 1,000 or sorry, at 11,000 feet on a standard day at 2,500 RPM. Um, and then we've got our answer there already because I advanced the slide a little too far, but it's 6.95 gallons per hour, and we'll figure out how we found that now. So 12,000 minus 10,000. That's our two corresponding uh, pressure altitudes, 12,000 and 10,000, we need to find for 11,000. So we need to find the difference between 12,000 and 10,000 is 2,000. Then we need to find the difference between their two corresponding uh, fuel flows of 6.8 and 7.1. Again, subtracting the corresponding fuel flow from the, uh, that corresponds to the pressure altitude. So 6.8 subtracted from 7.1, and that yields a negative number again of negative 0.3. So 12,000 minus 11,000 equals 1,000. And our proportion, 1,000 over 2,000 equals x over negative 0.3. And then we do our math. Cross multiply negative 0.3 times 1,000, divide 
that uh, result by 2,000, and that yields a negative 0.15. And then we do our math, we 6.8 gallons per hour, uh, corresponding to the 12,000 pressure altitude, which we use to uh, subtract 10 and 11 from, so the same, just keeping that all matched up. 6.8, subtract uh, negative 0.15, uh, subtracting a negative number means we add it, and we end up with 6.95 gallons per hour. All right, <clears throat> here we have a landing distance chart. This is the same, this should be fairly familiar at this point, the same kind of chart that we've been talking about in class, but the landing distance instead of the takeoff distance. Um, and it works just the same way as the takeoff distance that we've been using. So we have our conditions up here in the right-hand corner. Outside air temperature of 30 degrees, pressure altitude of 27. 100 feet, wind is a 5 knot tailwind, and weight is 2,500 pounds. So we come into the chart at our 30 degree mark. We draw up to our pressure altitude of 2,700 feet. Again, just kind of estimating the difference between the 2,000 and the 4,000 foot guidelines there. Then we draw straight across to our first reference line. And then we follow our guidelines down to our weight of 2,500 pounds. And then we draw straight across to our second reference line. Compensate for our winds, about five knot tailwind there. So we follow those guidelines up and then straight across to our third reference line. And then we find for our ground roll and we find for our 50 foot obstacle clearance height, ground roll approximately 1300 feet and obstacle clearance 2000 feet. Now, on a landing chart, what the ground roll means is that from the moment that the wheels touch the ground to the moment the aircraft comes to a complete stop. Over the 50 foot obstacle takes into account the descent over clearing a 50 foot obstacle and landing and rolling out to a complete stop. That's 2000 feet in this case. So let's look at another landing distance table. This is the tabular form. Here are our conditions. Solid surface runway. 2,800, or sorry, 2,880 field elevation, uh, 3,001 on the altimeter, and our temperature 105 degrees Fahrenheit with uh, 1,600 pound weight and using runway 33 with winds 27015. So it's a little more in depth. We'll start by finding our pressure altitude. To find that, we need to subtract our uh, altimeter setting from 2992. That yields 0 0.09, a negative 0 0.09. And then we multiply that times 1,000 to get our lapse of negative 90. So that means that our pressure altitude is 90 less than our field elevation. 2790 is our pressure altitude. So now we look at our headwind. Well, our runway is 330 degrees. Our winds are 270 degrees, so 330 minus 270 is 60 degrees. Using our rule of thumb, we can find our crosswind and our headwind. 60 degree crosswind means headwind is one half our total wind speed. The crosswind component in this case is 60 degrees, so that makes the headwind component 30 degrees and headwind is one half of our total wind speed in that case is 8.5 knots. So our headwind's 8.5 knots. We can erase all that and continue the process. Since pressure altitude is 2,790, we interpolate between these two parts of the chart, the 2,500 feet and the 5,000 foot pressure altitude part of the chart. Two columns there, those are circled. So what do we find? How do we find our ground roll here? Well, we know 495 minus 470. Those are the two different ground rolls we have to pick from. We find the difference there. Then we find the difference between 5,000 and 2,500. And then we find the difference between 5,000 and our current pressure altitude. 2,500 over 2,210. Set up our proportion. 25 over x. Cross multiply. 25 times 2,210 over 2,500 yields a difference of 22.1. And to keep it consistent, we subtract that from 495, and we find a raw ground roll of 473 feet. 
The landing over a 50 foot obstacle works similar. We find our initial difference there and our difference between our pressure altitudes and then our difference between our pressure altitude we want to find for, set up our proportion, do the math, and that yields a difference of 53. So we take 1195 minus 53, 1142 for a raw landing distance over a 50 foot obstacle of 1142. Now we have to look at our notes. The first note says decrease landing distance shown by 10% for every four knots of headwind. So at eight and a half knot headwind, which means we take 20% from 100%. So the way that we end up at a 20% correction is by dividing eight and a half knots by four and then basically dropping anything after the decimal point because we're really talking about whole four knot increments here. So for each four knots of headwind, we get 10% reduction. Uh, divide four into 8.5 twice as a whole number, and so that yields a 20% correction. And so we subtract 20% from 100% to get 0.8 or 80% of our original raw data. So our original raw ground roll and raw landing, uh, we get that uh, 0.8 times those numbers to get our, uh, our new numbers compensated for the note. And end up with an actual ground roll of 378.4 feet and a landing 914 feet. So our second uh, note talks about the temperature. It says for every 60 degree uh, Fahrenheit above standard we need to add 10% to our landing distance. So we have to find standard in Fahrenheit and that's 3.6 degrees per thousand feet. So 2.79 times negative 3.6 because we're decreasing the temperature as we climb equals 10.044 degree correction factor, negative 10.0. So 59 essentially plus, or so 59 degrees Fahrenheit plus negative 10.0 equals 49 degrees Fahrenheit. That's less, the difference between that and 105 is less than 60, and so there's no correction. Greater than, uh, less than symbol is backwards. Apologize for that. Still, there is no correction. So, and then note number three is talking about grass runways, and it doesn't apply because we're on a solid surface. For this next chart, we're going to use the uh, short field landing distance out of the Skyhawk 172R manual. This is a tabular chart, and the base level condition of this chart is that it's for 2,450 pounds. We'll set up some other conditions here. Uh, but in the left-hand corner you see there, we've set our temperature at 36 degrees centigrade, uh, weight 2,450 pounds, and our pressure altitude at 550 feet. So we're looking for ground roll. Landing distance would be the same. The landing over the 50-foot obstacle would be the same technique. So we'll just look at ground roll here. So we have to interpolate between a couple of columns. First, between the uh, sea level and uh, 1,000 foot, and then for the 30 degree and 40 degree temperature. So at 30 degrees, uh, sea level is 580 foot ground roll, 1,340 foot landing. And at 1,000 feet is uh, 600 foot ground roll and 1,375 foot landing. So we start our math here. We subtract zero from a thousand for sea level to find the difference between the two, and that's obviously a thousand. We subtract their corresponding ground roll to find the difference there. Then we subtract 550 from 1,000 feet, and that gives us our difference between uh, our altitude that we are using, sort of our uh, datum, to uh, the altitude that we're trying to find for the pressure altitude of 550 feet. So the difference there is 450 feet. And we set up our proportion. 1,000 over 450 is equal to 20 over x. Solve for x, and we find that x equals 9 in this case. So then 600 minus 9 equals 591 foot ground roll for 30 degrees centigrade. So now we do the same thing for 40 degrees centigrade. Sea level ground roll is 600 feet. The 1,000 foot above sea level ground roll is 620. And then we find for our pressure altitude the difference 450, the same, obviously. 
And then we need to subtract 0 from 1,000 feet for the two uh, altitudes we're interpolating between. And then we subtract the two corresponding ground rolls, 620 and 600, to find the difference of 20 feet. And we do our proportion. Um, and then we solve for x. And we find that it equals 9 again. Now, obviously, um, the numbers are the same because the distance between um, the uh, distance between the two ground rolls is 20 feet again, and obviously the other distance between the uh, thousand foot pressure altitude and our pressure altitude we're trying to find for is the same. So obviously the number would be the same. This is not always going to be the case, so you need to watch the numbers and uh, go ahead and do the math if the numbers are different. But you can get away with not doing the math if the numbers are the same. Just do it once, and you'll know the difference. Uh, for both 30 and 40 degrees centigrade or whatever temperatures you're looking for. So in this case, 620 minus 9 equals 611 feet ground roll. And so 611 feet ground roll at 40 degrees centigrade. And here's a little note to remind you. Again, the correction is the same as 30 degrees because the distance is the same between both 30 and 40 degree numbers for sea level and 1,000. So this can save you time, but you need to watch that and make sure that it is the same not just assume. Because even on this chart there are uh, differences between uh, temperature um, for a given altitude. Alright, so we've got our differences between 30 and 40. Now we need to interpolate for those. Incidentally, um, there has been some discussion in SI as to whether or not we need to do this. And the reason I'm teaching you this method is that we're not sure whether or not the FAA test has that on there has it the secondary sort of interpolation required to get your numbers? Um, I've got a question in to uh, the Mr. Chase, our chief instructor, about that. So we'll find that out for sure. Uh, operationally, at Laterna University, you will go hotter and higher for these kinds of charts, which will eliminate one step in the interpolation for you. But we just want to make sure that on the FA written, that same uh, scenario is true. So for now, we'll just plan this two-step interpolation until uh, we get to the point where we know for sure that the FAA written is not going to require that from you. So now we interpolate for 36 degrees centigrade, which is our condition. So uh, 40 minus 30 is 10, which is the difference between our two uh, table temperatures. And then 40 minus 36 is 4. And then 611 minus 591 is 20. And so then we set up our proportion and solve for x and then 611 minus 8 is 603 and so, so our ground roll at 36 degrees centigrade at 550 foot pressure altitude is 603 feet and then we check for notes but we need to we notice on this chart there are no notes but always check for those notes all right this should finish up this tutorial on these powerpoint slides that we went through uh, for chapter 9 and 10 I'll continue to do these, so keep checking back to the YouTube channel. Even if I'm not posting links on Blackboard, I'll try to get those up as soon as I can, as soon as I finish the tutorial. In addition, if there's any other tutorials you want me to do, um, I will try to find the time to make those to help you understand this material better.